Hi, this is a video about uh, force along a line and we're using a web works as example. This is a um, good problem. Um, they tell us this is a uh, ball joints connected to the ends of each strut showing and the structure supports a force of 1550 which lies on XZ plane here. So it's this force here, it's 1550. And it's on that plane, XD plane. And uh, the dimension of the arrangement, they give us ABCD of that. And they want you to us to find all those forces in the struts FAB, FAC, and FAD. So I'm going to say for this problem, in part one, we're not going to solve this magnitude, but we are using force along a line to help us to get what we need to solve. Um, this is a 3D equilibrium problem essentially, and because there are three, four forces here, they balance each other. And uh, but in order to construct our equations for fx equal to zero, fy equal to zero, and fz equal to zero, we have to find the component of all those four forces, right? What's the component for FAB? What's the X component and Y component, Z component for FAB? That's essentially the force along a line that's required for us to do first. Okay, so that's our goal for this video. Force along a line. If we can find FAB in a term of IJK term, we achieve our goal, you know? So how do we do so? Um, so that's for some line. First of all, we need to figure out the AB position vector from A to B. You can go ahead, find A coordinate difference and a B coordinate, uh, um, A coordinate and B coordinate, and then figure out the difference. So that's what we're going to do at first time. A, uh, do we have a coordinate here? Let's take a look. They already draw. Because this is going to be our x direction. x direction this time is going forward. y direction is going to the right. And z direction going to going up. Well, they can do it. It doesn't have to be our normal way. Our normal way is this, right? x, y, z. But it can be anything. So in that situation, we're going to abide by this coordinated draw. So a, point a, what's x coordinate? So basically, it's this, right? And uh, it's going to be hard. A coordinate is this distance. That's going to be your K right here. That's your. And how about Y coordinate difference for A? A is going to be at XZ plane. If it's on XZ plane, well, the Y coordinate will have to be zero. And how about Z coordinate? Z coordinate is telling us how tall this is, and that's A. So we're going to do read B coordinate as well. B is right here. Looks like B is on the Y axis. Okay, so if it's on Y axis, X is going to be 0, Z is going to be 0. We're just going to read Y. Pulling to the right, it's positive for Y. This B is on the left. So how much on the left? It's B. So it's negative B. So knowing that, we can quickly figure out position vector A to B, B minus A, final minus initial, 0 minus K, negative K, I, negative B minus 0, negative B, J, plus 0 minus A, negative A, K. So we have our A, B, position vector. Uh, again, if you can quickly figure out the difference between this x, y, z coordinate, you can direct it gets to this step without writing down its absolute coordinates. Now, I'm going to look at f, a, c, because we need to essentially find f, a, c as well, and we also need to find uh, f, a, this is point D, F-A-D as well. 
then we also need to figure out this force F. So all those four forces, we're going to write in IJK term. In order to do that, you, you need to find position vector first, right? So we need to find, in order to do that for FAC, we need to find a position vector for AC. And this time, I'm going to just take a leap of faith, and I'm going to figure the coordinate difference for I, J, K, without trying to figure out A and C uh, absolute coordinates. We're just going to find their difference from A to C. That's a direction, so I'm going to use C minus A, okay? In terms of X coordinate, it's this way, and the C is behind of A, so that's going to be negative, right? It's negative. How much behind? Right here, negative a K. Now let's look at J. J is our Y. What's the Y coordinate difference between, you know, uh, using C minus A, right? C minus A. Okay, you realize C is on the y-axis. A is also on the xz plane. Well, they both have coordinate for y equal to 0. There's no difference in terms of y. You know, they are all 0, so it's plus 0. Now, the last one, the k coordinate difference is z direction. So, C minus A. C is higher than A. How much higher? C is, uh, this is C, and K, A is A here. The difference between them will be C minus A, okay? So we got position vector for AC. Now, we needed to use the same thing, figure out the position vector from A to D. Again, I'm going to try, since I already tried it, right? We are going to figure out the coordinate difference between A and D. So A and D, in terms of I, X coordinate is this direction. And we're using D minus A, final minus the initial. D, however, is behind of A, so it's going to be negative value. And how much behind? Again, K, negative K. Now let's look at J term. D minus A. Okay. J term is this direction. D is in a more positive direction than A. And how much more? Small d here. That's the difference between that. Now let's look at K term. Again, it's D minus A, and we're looking at we're looking at the z direction, d minus a. Well, you realize d is actually lower than a because a is, you know, small a much higher, so it's going to be negative a, okay? Then we have our, all the position vector set it up. This is going to be really helpful. Why? Because next step, once you find the position vector, can you quickly find out AB, the magnitude? Yes, right? It's K squared plus B squared plus A squared. And you can find out the AC as well. And you can find AD magnitude as well using the same logic. Once you have found that out, you can find lambda AB. Because lambda AB is going to be position vector AB over distance. For example, we're going to do that now. We're going to go ahead and say we're ready to write down F force AB in a vector form. And remember the governing equation is FAB without a hat, that's a magnitude, and times AB position vector divided by distance. However, this problem we have no idea what's the magnitude of the force. That's unknown. And that's actually what you're solving for this problem. So guess what? We're just going to write down as a variable. FAB, that's what you're solving. And then times AB position vector, negative KI from step 1, negative BJ minus AK. Then divided by this position uh, 
vector magnitude k square plus b square plus a square, right? So knowing that, you will be able to go ahead to put those numbers in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to put a number this time. If our k here is 14, and my b is 15, the a is 4, then we can find the distance. Then we can times our FAB. So first step, we need to find, figure out the distance. So put it in there, 14 square plus 15 square, then plus uh, 16. And we're going to take a square root of that. And this time, I'm going to find the exact form because, you know, what works could be tricky. I don't want to round out in the middle of the uh, calculation. So in that situation, my I term, I'm ready to combine them. I have FAB times negative 14, then divided by this value. So we'll have negative 14 over square root of 437, don't forget, times FAB, the one you are solving. Then our J term will be negative 15 over square root of 437, FAB times J. K term will be 4, negative 437, times FAB, times K. So now we have force along a line expressed in IJK form, despite we do not know FAB just yet. So hopefully this will help you or encourage you to go ahead to write down this form for FAC as well. Force along a line. And that will be just FAC, what you are solving, times position vector AC, which you calculated at the step two, then divided by magnitude of AC. Same wise, we can go ahead and find FAD. That will be our FAD we're solving times AD position vector divided by AD. Then we got three expressions of force along a line here in step four, five, six. And then the last force, it's that red line, this, uh, this force F right here, right? This force F. We need to find that force in a 3D form IJK. And for this force, they do give us the magnitude. So in this case, our IJK will be actually a number instead of like a variable here. So now let's look at this one. This F is going from A to somewhere. We don't know exact point, right? We don't know. It's to this point, for example. Then it's essentially, again, force along a line. I'm actually going to write down my expression here. So it's this force from A to this point. I'm going to call this point, uh, how about E? A to E. That's just for my own clarity. And now, remember, let's just Go ahead to do this in one step, shall we? It's going to be this force magnitude, FAE, without a hat. It's going to be this position vector divided by the distance. And we do know this magnitude of force, which is 1550. And AE from A to E. How about we just look at the coordinate difference? So from E minus A, final minus the initial, E minus A. Now let's look at it. This is our X direction. I'm going to use a different line, different color. This is our X direction. X direction, A, E, they are on the same plane. They are same on this uh, X 
the plane. Okay, and uh, so how, what's the difference between x coordinate? You know, e is behind a, so it's going to be negative in terms of i term. How much behind? g. Okay, so this triangle here give us the coordinate difference. I mean, right? And then let's look at y coordinate difference. So it's going to be our j term. J term is this direction, y direction. All right. And like we said earlier, a and e is on the same xz plane. They all have the coordinate for y equal to zero. So j will be zero. And now let's look at last one, k. k is z direction. From e to a, e is below a. How much below? So it's going to be negative. How much below? It's going to be this distance, this height a here, and plus this h here. So it's going to be a plus h below. That's going to give us the position vector from a to e. And of course, we can quickly figure it out. The distance will be g squared plus z squared. We can ignore that. Plus a plus h squared. Right? Then plug all those values in, your g and your a and h. Then we got an answer for our i, j, k term. And like we predicted earlier, this is going to be a value in there. Okay? That's going to be a value in there. Okay, so this is a great example to show when you have multiple forces that they balance each other in three dimensions. We need to go back to find each individual force their 3D vector form. So for this example, you did four times force along a line. Hopefully this is helpful. See you next time. Bye.